Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For the past couple of years, we've reported in some detail, some horrifying detail, on how the professional left has totally transformed the city of San Francisco from this country's most beautiful city, our Cape Town, into a cesspool of filth, homelessness, and drug addiction. That is not an exaggeration. There are now more junkies in San Francisco than there are high school students. And so you won't be surprised to learn that the city has also become threatening and dangerous. The rate of property crime in San Francisco is the highest of any big city in America. More than five dozen cars are smashed and robbed every single day of the year. It's a disaster. But don't worry, the city's leaders have a plan to respond to this. And of course, it's not more cops or better enforcement of the law. That would be bigoted. Instead, the city of San Francisco has decided to ban words that suggest San Francisco has a crime problem. So they invent a kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it. And it gets worse with every generation. For some reason, it just keeps getting worse. I'll give you an example of that. There's a condition in combat. Most people know about it. It's when a fighting person's nervous system has been stressed to its absolute peak and maximum. Can't take any more input. The nervous system has either snapped or is about to snap. In the First World War, that condition was called shell shock. Simple, honest, direct language. Two syllables, shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. People aren't allowed to talk about crime. Maybe they won't notice crime exists. That's the thinking. So last month, the city's Board of Supervisors decreed that there will be no more convicted felons in San Francisco. Going forward, ex-cons are to be called, quote, justice-involved individuals. Well, as it happens, the people they committed crimes against are also, quote, justice-involved individuals. So, in other words, victim and criminal are now morally indistinguishable. Then a whole generation went by, and the Second World War came along, and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now. Takes a little longer to say. Doesn't seem to hurt as much. Fatigue is a nicer word than shock. Shell shock. Battle fatigue. <laughs> then we had the war in Korea in 1950. Madison Avenue was riding high by that time. And the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. <laughs> hey, we're up to eight syllables now. And the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's totally sterile now. Operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. <laughs> then, of course, came the war in Vietnam, which has only been over for about 16 or 17 years. And thanks to the lies and deceit surrounding that war, I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. And the pain is completely buried under jargon. Post-traumatic stress disorder. I'll bet you if we'd have still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time. I'll bet you that. I'll bet you that. That's on purpose. This is woke equality. But there's a problem. Back in Washington, leaders of the Democratic Party apparently haven't gotten the memo on this. And some are still using the term felon which is the real F word. So you might want to send the kids from the room as we play the following clip. We warn you, it's ugly. An overwhelming majority of Americans agree that anyone trying to buy a gun should at least have to prove that they're not a or somebody legally prohibited from owning one. And um, I do support full restoration of rights to vote. I think the policy of deporting <laughs> makes sense. For all those young men, mostly of color, who got arrested and are now for life for selling that weed on the corner. Every law-abiding citizen has a right to have a gun unless you're a What enabled that young man to get a gun he was not entitled to. He was a and he had a conviction. Sorry about all the F words. How insensitive can you get? Someone better call HR. Yeah. And some of this stuff is just silly. We know, we all know that. Like on the airlines, they say they want to pre-board. Well, what the hell is pre-board? What does that mean? To get on before you get on? <laughs> they say they're going to pre-board those passengers in need of special assistance. Cripples! <laughs> Simple, honest, direct language. 
There's no shame attached to the word cripple that I can find in any dictionary. No shame attached to it. In fact, it's a word used in Bible translations. Jesus healed the cripples. It doesn't take seven words to describe that condition. But we don't have any cripples in this country anymore. We have the physically challenged. Is that a grotesque enough evasion for you? How about differently abled? I've heard them call that differently abled. You can't even call these people handicapped anymore. They'll say, we're not handicapped, we're handy capable. <laughs> these poor people have been bullshitted by the system into believing that if you change the name of the condition, somehow you'll change the condition. Well, hey, cousin, <laughs> doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. We have no more deaf people in this country, hearing impaired. No one's blind anymore, partially sighted or visually impaired. We have no more stupid people. Everybody has a learning disorder. <laughs> or he's minimally exceptional. How would you like to be told that about your child? He's minimally exceptional. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Psychologists actually have started calling ugly people those with severe appearance deficits. <laughs> it's getting so bad that any day now I expect to hear a rape victim referred to as an unwilling sperm recipient. <laughs> you know? And we have no more old people in this country. No more old people. We shipped them all away and we brought in these Senior citizens. Isn't that a typically American 20th century phrase? Bloodless, lifeless. No pulse in one of them. A senior citizen. But I've accepted that one. I've come to terms with it. I know it's here to stay. We'll never get rid of it. That's what they're going to be called, so I'll relax on that. But the one I do resist, the one I keep resisting, is when they look at an old guy and they'll say, Look at him, Dan. He's 90 years young. Imagine the fear of aging that reveals. To not even be able to use the word old to describe someone. To have to use an antonym. And fear of aging is natural. It's universal, isn't it? We all have that. No one wants to get old. No one wants to die. But we do. So we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> I started bullshitting myself when I got to my 40s. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, Well, I, I guess I'm getting older. Older sounds a little better than old, doesn't it? Sounds like it might even last a little longer. <laughs> Bullshit, I'm getting old. And it's okay, because thanks to our fear of death in this country, I won't have to die. I'll pass away. <laughs> Or I'll expire like a magazine subscription. <laughs> if it happens in the hospital, they'll call it a terminal episode. The insurance company will refer to it as negative patient care outcome. And if it's the result of malpractice, they'll say it was a therapeutic misadventure. I'm telling you, some of this language makes me want to vomit. Well, maybe not vomit. Makes me want to engage in an involuntary personal protein spill. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the city of San Francisco, there are no longer any juvenile delinquents. That whole category has disappeared. Criminals under 18 are now referred to as, quote, young people impacted by the juvenile justice system, as if the system and not the kid committed the crime, which is what the left, in fact, believes. It's your fault, not theirs. Check your privilege, middle America. Drug addicts, meanwhile, in San Francisco are now called people with a history of substance abuse. Rather, use. Use, not abuse. Get it? Heroin addicts are now the same as insulin-dependent diabetics. Both use substances. You can't call one better than the other. They're both exactly the same. Now, you could laugh this off at San Francisco, after all, where all the crazy things happen. But think through the implications. Language makes thought possible. When the words disappear, so does our ability to think about the ideas the words represent. When they prevent you from saying the obvious, over time it becomes impossible to see the obvious. And that's exactly, of course, why they do it. Those who control your words control your mind.